with Walter Stack again on Magnetic Island. And Walter, I'd like you to talk us through what's happened uh, that's going to affect farmers on the east coast of Queensland now from Gladstone all the way through to uh, tip of Cape York because we've now got soil, uh, nutrient and chemical restrictions applied to farmers based on no science but a scientific consensus. Can you tell us what's happening, what's really happening? Well, what's happening, they're claiming that, uh, that nutrients and agrochemicals of various types are a threat to the water quality of the reef and are causing the, the uh, health of the corals to decline. Now, there's no actual evidence for any of this. There's no actual evidence that, for to, well, for a start, the actual use of, of nutrients of fertilizers and agrochemicals has declined over recent years because they're expensive to use and farmers have, have tried to minimize the amount that, that they use. So the actual amount has gone down from what it was, say, three decades ago when we didn't think it was any problem. Uh, but now, with even less, we're, we're saying that it's, a, that it's a threat. The other thing is that if we actually try to measure these things, the uh, nutrients, we can't measure them on the reef because they aren't there. You've actually tried. I mean, there have been research studies trying oh, yeah. to measure them. They're yeah. just not at the level yeah. that can be measured. No. They're non-existent. Yeah, yeah. they're basically not non-existent. There is a natural level of nutrients in the environment, and that's there, but, but it, that hasn't increased. Now, in the case of, uh, of herbicides and pesticides, the only one that's, that shows up and, and our modern analytical techniques can detect these things in parts per, per trillion. So we can detect them in levels way lower than any possible uh, detrimental effect that's ever been detected. Uh, but uh, the, the levels that are, that are present of the diuron are far below any levels that are known to be to be of any harm, and that's only right at the mouths of rivers. So the only the uh, diuron is the only one they can trace, the only one they can measure so far. The others uh, are so low that they're not non-existent, yeah. and that is only measured in river mouths, and outside of that, it's non-existent. Yes, and in those river mouths, the actual fresh water coming down, especially in in the wet season, is far more toxic to the marine life than any sediment or any uh, yeah. nutrients coming out of the river. The fresh water will actually kill coral. <laughs> so th these are based on a scientific consensus, no data, no, and, and contrary to the actual data on both the amount of soil that's rush, washed off, the nutrients and the chemicals. It's a, it's a nonsense. Yeah, and when, and when it comes to the soil, they're, they're, it's being claimed that the uh, sediment in the rivers has increased by fourfold since European settlement. Now there's no measurements whatsoever to show that and in fact if you look at the areas where there are crops that have been cleared and crops put in or pasturage where improved pasturage have, has been uh, planted, the water running off of that in the wet season is actually clearer and cleaner than the water running off the natural native vegetation. Because the native vegetation, whether it's rainforest or whether it's uh, scattered trees, uh, doesn't hold the soil anything like the crops and the uh, improved pasturage. So crops actually improve the ground cover which retains the soil. That's right, that's right, yeah. And so there, there's, if anything, the actual uh, sediment in runoff has probably uh, been reduced. But th this whole business of, of a huge increase was based on one study that was done in which they found some traces of barium in some coral heads off the mouth of the uh, um, uh, it's, it's around, up around the uh, uh, Palm Island area. Uh, and the, uh, the level of barium has sometimes been used as an indicator because it, it comes from, from sediments, 
from, from land, from washing away of land things. But it's also in the marine environment, of course, because sediments have been washing in from the land for millions of years. So you can get storms that stir up the bottom and from the wave action, and you can get an increase in, in barium. Uh, but it's assumed, or it has been assumed, that the reason for the increase in barium at that time was that was shortly after uh, about 60,000 head of cattle had been brought into the Burdekin Basin. This was around 1850 or 1860. Uh, and then just shortly after that, you got this, this increase in, uh, in barium. So they're saying, ah, oh, see, the cattle caused the erosion by, by uh, overgrazing and, and uh, their walking tracks and everything. And that, and that caused the, well, there's a million cattle in the uh, Burdekin <laughs> Basin now, and there has been no increase. In fact, it's gone back to the background level. Uh, so uh, that figure is just stretching a point way beyond. And, and if you dig into the, to the scientific literature on using barium as an indicator of, of uh, siltation, you find that, yes, in some places it does seem to correlate with increased siltation, but in other places you get increases in barium where there's been no increase in siltation, where the siltation itself has been measured directly. And so it's, it's a, a totally uncertain, uh, unreliable indicator, and, and the basic evidence indicates just the opposite. And the real science on the reef itself in a reef and out of reef shows that farmers are not having an increase in levels of sediment or nutrients or pesticides. Yeah. End I, I mean, the, the inshore waters of the Barrier Reef are completely blanketed in sediment, but that goes back since the last ice age for the last 10,000 years. Every farmers wet didn't season, cause that. The farmers didn't cause it, and that sediment in the inshore waters, every time the wind blows and the waves come up, it stirs it up. And so our inshore waters uh, on this whole region are very turbid any time the wind's blowing. They only become clear in calmer weather. And, and they are stirred up again immediately. Now, the, um, any additional siltation that would come off the land would have virtually no effect on the marine environment anyway because the only things that can live there are the corals and things that are tolerant to those type of conditions because naturally it's a very turbid area. There you go.